whoa, whoa, whoa. And that is on being a good parent. How did she bully? How did she bully? Oh my God. I just hate Leslie so much. Why are we setting Maddie up like this? This is our little secret. We're gonna do it on the sly. I don't wanna do anything but cry. <laughs> Hello guys and welcome back to Dance Mums and today we are on season 2 episode 17 it's called Maddie's Got a Secret which I can only imagine means that we're just gonna have more shenanigans Abby's gonna be playing the game to make sure that Maddie gets another victory anyway before we get into this episode I just want to say thank you guys for the support and love on the channel we're on our way to 3,000 subscribers woo and yeah really really excited to get into this but before we do shall we do the pyramid i think we shall so the pyramid is looking a little bit odd in this episode i've taken jill and kendall off because we haven't seen them for about five episodes so therefore i don't even know if they're still on the show at this point i know they obviously come back but like i don't know what's going on with them so they're currently sat over there we have obviously melissa on the bottom is anybody surprised by that? She's currently in the probation spot. She is on probation. I haven't appreciated her in the last couple of episodes. Yeah, it's just been tough to watch, I won't lie. And it's getting increasingly more difficult to have a nuanced view on her. Purely because the show's not exactly painting her in a very nice light. It's starting to get... Well, it's not starting to get jarring. It just is jarring. On the bottom of the pyramid, we do have the mums. And that is purely because I didn't have the heart to put the kids down there. Because the kids did do a decent job last week, I actually thought. I liked the dance. So, therefore, that's why the kids are all above. The mums, they're just down there because I've got nowhere else to put them. They didn't do anything especially crazy in the last episode, which was good. So, on the whole, very, very happy with that. I did enjoy. Then on the second rung of the pyramid, we have Paige, Brooke, and Nia. Nia obviously came ninth. Her solo was all right. The other two, they competed in the group number. And again, it was all right. It was good. I enjoyed it. They did a good job. But the other three just had a little bit more of a claim to victory in the last episode. On the second rung of the pyramid, we have Maddie. And we also have... Chloe, I forgot her name for a second there. That is embarrassing. Which means that we have Mackenzie on the top of the pyramid. Now, Mackenzie's on top of the pyramid, obviously, because she won. She was the only person to win last week. And the other two are on the second rung because they came second. And their solo was, or their duet, was one of my favourite dancers that we've had on the show so far. I loved it. I thought it was amazing. It was just incredible. But that's our pyramid for the week. I hope you guys enjoyed. Let's get into the video. Any other teacher would probably think overall high score second place was wonderful. Any other dance teacher would think that's absolutely incredible. But we've learned Abby is not a normal dance teacher. She's anything but. She's actually the worst dance teacher. I mean, what kind of dance teacher doesn't even dance? Paige. And Brooke. I completely forgot that they were actually on probation on the show and that they stuck probation stickers on them. Like, that's just funny. They didn't even do that when Kendall was back on probation. This is just absolutely hysterical and funny. Like, I love it so much. Who can take this woman seriously when she's slapping probation stickers on people's faces? He never came to me and said, hey, can I enter my solo? I thought they would come to me and say, please, let us do our solos. Could you ask the lady if you could write them in? You were expecting them to come up to you and be like, can I do my solo? Even though, A, you foster an environment of that's not okay, even though you did do it with Maddie. And second of all, they've not been practicing their solo all week like you had done with Maddie the week leading up to her performance again. I think you're using this as an excuse to put them on the bottom of the pyramid when actually they didn't do anything that bad last week. Like, I'm sorry, but it's just ridiculous. And it just makes me a little bit mad and angry, I can't lie. She won the overall high score. It was crowned Petite Miss Energy Dance. That is such a long name. Petite Miss Energy Dance. Why, why does it have to be four words long? Why can't it just be like, ah? Oh. I don't know. I don't have a good answer for this. But I do like the fact that Mackenzie is on the top of the pyramid. That is amazing. I do love that. And big props to her because she is a star. Mackenzie typically 
Ashley is not on the top of the pyramid. She's usually down in the bottom row. Could you have turned your nose up at the bottom row anymore, Melissa? Like, she's often at the... Bottom row. <laughs> Sorry. Sorry. The bottom row. <laughs> Your solo is entitled, What Goes Around Comes Around. If Abby truly believes that, she better look out because fate's gonna run her over with a Mack truck. Oh my god, Christy! Christy! Ah, <laughs> uh, the thing about Christy is that her confessionals are just like top tier. Every single time she steps into the confessional booth, it's like, right, let's work some magic and let's get some good confessionals for the show to use she's like do you know what if you're gonna take the piss out of me during filming might as well make my confessionals good and i agree this weekend is my first formal school dance and i was wondering if i would be able to go to it no dance is your only thing that you must do in life you're not allowed to enjoy any of the things that we enjoyed as teenagers you're not allowed to do any of that because dance comes first and that's most important Arr! i would have had brooding brook on my hands a miserable rotten disrespectful teenager how can you talk about kids like that i'm sorry but brooke is none of those things she seems so lovely and you're just like she's disrespectful she's rude she's brooding i'd be pissed off if you didn't let me go to my fucking formal dance that would piss me off that would wind me up so much i'd be like listen listen here abby lee miller i want to go to my school dance i never got my prom because of covid it's an inspiration from that movie the hunger games it's about children killing each other to survive oh my god i swear there's a rule in the hunger games i could be wrong but i'm sure you have to be 12 or over in order to participate in the hunger games i'm fairly certain nobody in this dance is over the age of 12 therefore why are they killing each other i want you to go get peyton do not make a big deal out of it just go in and tap her on the shoulder and say come with me Okay, I'm not ugh-in because of Peyton. I'm ugh-in because that means Leslie's gonna be in this episode. Oh, no. I thought we were free of her. I thought we were free of the misery and anguish that she brings. Oh, no. Brooke, I take it back. Don't go to your formal dance. Please stay and compete in this competition because I actually can't put up with Leslie for the week. I can't put up with her for a whole episode. That will actually wind me up actually annoy me i can't imagine that she would go back and invite her again to the group when it didn't work the first time i just can't get over the fact that abby treats peyton as like oh you're our substitute like and just in case we need anybody else we'll bring you in because we know you're fame hungry and we know that your mum's fame hungry and they want to be on the tv so yeah we will get you in this group because brooke's gone there has been rumors going around the studio that she's bullying everybody wait what listen i know she played a bully but that doesn't mean she had to become one now obviously i don't know whether these are true false they're rumors going round. so like let's be honest teenage girls can be bitches let's just put that out there okay we all know it you guys have all been teenage girls and you've all encountered teenage girls they could be catty they could be nasty they could be bitchy i've encountered them i was friends with some of the best ones i just feel like it's just a very teenage thing everyone turns into like little bitches and like just annoying people and they go through that phase and then most of them get out of it by the time they're like 17 18. i want brooke to go to her eighth grade farewell dance because i want brooke to be a normal kid and that is on being a good parent because you know what when you let your hobbies overtake your life then your hobbies no longer become something that you enjoy they become something that you dread and this is the thing with like my performing arts when i was growing up i did it no not a fan no not the feathers the feathers just look a bit cheap they're not very nice that no no it's giving something that um jen shah would wear on real housewives of salt lake city and if you're not watching that show go watch it on my channel because i'm doing very funny videos on it so you got no excuse Ooh. the dress is gorgeous that's pretty Ooh. Ooh, that one wasn't good. I liked the middle one, the silver one. I thought that was fun. 
that was a moment i was like oh brooke you're looking fabulous darling fabulous i feel like <laughs> in the mood fabulous darling no capes do you like that one i like this one she's Aww. crying oh it's such a lovely dress and the fact that Kelly's crying. Oh god, this is so emotional. Don't, because I'll start crying. I, I won't. But like, imagine if I did. I'll deal with these dance moms and take whatever they dish out as long as Peyton gets this opportunity to dance with this group. No. Oh, I thought we had more time. I thought we had more time, but no, she's here. She's going to be annoying. She's going to be causing trouble all over the place. She's going to be like, Kelly, I heard you said this to Abby. Mmm. Christy, I heard you accused Melissa of this. She's just going to be mixing the pot, causing trouble. Poor Holly's going to be sat there like, why am I still here? I could be working right now. But no, I've had to take a feckin' semester off to focus on the dance. Ugh. I am really leery to tell Abby that Peyton hurt her finger the night before during <gasps> rehearsals. During rehearsals? This sounds like an Abby Lee Miller lawsuit on the way. What do you mean she hurt her finger? I need more information. Because, like, when it's, like, bandaged up and taped up like that, surely it's not broken. It won't be broken. Right? No? I'm not sure. Well, then she's gonna have to suck it up. If she has to take it off, she'll take it off. Go get ready. Get warmed up. I hate everyone's reactions to, like, injuries being like, Oh, just suck it up. It's fine. Just suck it up. This is how you cause permanent injury to yourself. Abby has a tendency to typecast people. Last time, Peyton was the bully. This time, she's hunting children. Actually, when you put it like that, Christy... Is, is Abby making a subtle comment about Peyton and her behaviour in the dance academy? Like, that can't be by accident, surely. Like, surely this can't be by accident. You told yeah. Christy and not me. I didn't want you to yell at her. So you go and tell other people before you tell me? Because funnily enough, look how you're reacting immediately. It's like, how how did she bully? How did she bully? You, you're constantly on the defensive and it doesn't make people want to tell you anything. Interesting that Peyton's been bullying Maddie. That's interesting. I didn't expect that. That That's one thing I didn't expect. Bullying, if you know what the word means, what? It's an imbalance of power. So if you're using your power in a way that's unbalanced, like a child who might be six inches taller, being more aggressive, even verbally, that would be considered bullying. School her, because you're forgetting that Holly works in a school. She knows what bullying is. And if she's defending Melissa, then yeah, it probably is bullying. She's not going to be throwing around the B word for nothing. I'm, I don't want to get so involved. That's, I don't that's get your involved. answer for everything, isn't it? Guess what? Yeah. You got yourself involved when you told somebody else something. Something. I'm so sick of crazy. She's a great girl. here trying to belittle and put my daughter down. Whoa, whoa, whoa. How did this turn from, like, Melissa going, I don't want to get involved, to you having to go at her, to then you having to go at Christy? How's Christy got anything to do with this? And obviously she was the one that Melissa told. How has fucking Leslie been up in this room for 10 minutes and she's already caused a raging argument because she's just not willing to accept that her child might have just been a little bit nasty to the kids. She's a good girl. Peyton is a good girl. You're damn right. As good a girl as you. your daughter. Listen, shut your face. Don't talk about my daughter. This is what I mean by she's just so vile. Like actually vile. Like, what do you mean, shut your face, stop talking about my daughter? It happens with Kathy a lot, in the sense of, like, they'll be like, you're such a horrible person, Christy, you're such a horrible person, you're such a horrible person. And then Christy will, like, clap back, and they'll be like, I can't believe you said that, I can't believe you said that, I can't believe you said that. And I'm like, but you've just spouted all of this nasty, horrible stuff to her, she's defending herself, and you tell her to shut up, or you tell her that's not acceptable, how dare you say that? Like, get a grip. If you can't take it, don't dish it out. I don't like you. Well, you're not my friend. Yeah. This is so toxic and so nasty, but also, like, I just hate Leslie so much. Like, I actually do. Le Leslie's got zero fans, right? She's got zero fans. No fans at all. Surely. None. Nada. Zero. Nil. I don't, I don't know any other words for zero. So, yeah. But we're just gonna have to move on, because... What do you mean that this argument's still going on? It's the largest competition in the United States. Wait, it's the largest competition in the United States? 
No way. You definitely haven't mentioned that a hundred thousand times this episode and we're not even halfway through. Chloe's is called What Goes Around because I really do think Chloe needs to learn that lesson. What goes around comes around. And when her mother's evil and disrespectful to people, it's going to come around. What? Why is she projecting this onto Chloe? Why? Because Chloe is like one of the nicest children ever and she needs to learn that what goes around comes around. What a vile, vindictive woman this is. So Abby calls Maddie in and says, Maddie, I want you to come in and rehearse this morning. I have no idea why. Anybody else seeing this? Anybody want to jump into the comments and defend Abby, Melissa, Maddie, and be like, oh, oh, she doesn't get extra practices. She doesn't do any extra practice that the other girls don't get. She's not doing any extra practice at all. Not a chance. She doesn't get called in in the morning to do extra practice. That may be fair for, for some weeks, I, I agree. You can't say it never happens. And if it's happening and they're showing it on TV, then what about all the times that it hasn't been caught on camera? It hasn't been shown on TV. You ever think about that? I'm always looking for more opportunities for Maddie. Star power is so big that they've split up the competition. No, no, she's not She's not doing two different dances at two different conventions and they're gonna like make it secret and they're not gonna find out and then the mums are gonna get told and then it's just gonna be a whole fucking palaver. Why are we setting Maddie up like this? Do you understand, Melissa, when the mums are saying they are making our children turn against your daughter. They're making us dislike you because they are giving your child opportunities that we don't get. When is this going to dawn on you that yes, this is good for your daughter, but it's actually completely detrimental to her? I'm trying to do something that I've never done before. Having a kid in two titles in two hours, take advantage of every opportunity. And it's just so much pressure on Maddie. And this is how you cause kids to crack. Do I think she's going to do it? Yeah, probably. This is just monumentally unfair. Like, monumentally. There's no part of this that makes me go, oh, yeah, this this is totally okay. Yeah, I agree with this. So I think maybe do the cry number. I don't want to do anything but cry. Not again. I thought we were done with that. I thought we left that in season one. We thought it was DOA, but nope. They've been resuscitating it this entire time, just keeping it on life support. And now it's ready to come out the coma. It's back on stage. I do like Cry, though. I think it's one of the best dances that we've seen so far. I really need to do well in this group number this week because I want a permanent spot on this team. This is a great opportunity and the pressure's on. I, too, am also reading off a teleprompter and I would like to say welcome to the evening news. My name is Ethan Galloway and I am here to tell you the headlines of tonight's stories. I think it's important for kids to be tough in the dance world. So she just needs to suck it up and get through the dance. Oh, yeah, because that's going to heal her broken finger. Like, oh, brilliant. Yeah, let's just tell her to push through and further damage herself because that's what a good parent will do, right? Like, this is what pisses me off is that the other mums will do stuff that, like, is genuinely good parenting and Abby will be like, see? Bad parenting. And then Leslie's like, yeah, dance with an injury and just, like, suck it up. And she's like, ah, oh, that's exactly what I would have said to do. Like, Leslie and Abby are actually scarily similar. And I think that's why I don't like Leslie. So, Peyton, how's the finger? Can I, can I hear it good? No, it's not good. It's, it's not, not okay. But it's her finger. I, I just, I'm just beyond words at this point. It's a finger. So she's going to look bad in her wedding pictures. Oh, well. That's not going to hurt her dancing. I'm sorry, but I don't think the judges are going to begrudge you the fact that you've got a splint on your finger. I don't know why I was doing the Spider-Man pose there, but you know what I mean? There's no child welfare here. Well-being. There's nobody that's looking out for the welfare of the child here. Like, this is what's bugging me. As someone who, like, works with children, the fact that there's no sort of, like, health and safety person here... There's like, actually, no, this is not okay. We can't allow her to do this. Like, that's shocking to me. That's really, really shocking. I mean, usually it'd be the dance teacher, but Abby's fucking incompetent. So what are you going to do? Didn't some guy survive in some cliff that in the ate his arm? He's fine. There's your answer. I don't think he's fine. I'm fairly certain that he was traumatized. <laughs> 
I mean, the guy lost his arm, so I feel like that's bad enough. What I've just been reading is actually kind of crazy. Like, he waited until it had decomposed and then broke the bones because it was easier to do. I was like, rah, that is craziness. I'm very happy with my decision to send Brooke to the school dance. She'll do another competition next weekend. You can't ever do your eighth grade farewell again. I completely agree. There are some things in life that you'll be able to do again and again and again, but this is one of those once in a lifetime things, and I completely agree. I don't begrudge Kelly at all for doing it. I would have made the exact same decision. Do not come back to this dressing room and think that you were fabulous and everybody else screwed up. Hayden's hey, been very vocal about the fact that she was set up in that moment. Producers told her what to say and then it caused a whole kerfuffle. It wasn't even about like the people in the room. It was about the other competitors that she saw on, in the competition. But this is just mean spirited. Why freak her out before she comes goes on stage? Like, what? Why are you doing this? Why are you psyching her out? Because I'd be going on stage thinking, "Fuck sake, why is Abby got in my head now?" I'm I'm hoping that she'll be able to suck it up and get the job done so these mothers have nothing to say negative about her. Mackenzie no, misses getting on Peyton's back. I started that number and I was like, Ooh, this is stinky. This is kind of stinky. But it got so much better as we went throughout. And I was, I, again, I was thinking halfway through, I was like, I'm not really getting a story from this. And then they started do dropping dead one by one. And I was like, ooh, this is fun. This is exciting. This is actually quite good. I think I'd give that an 8 out of 10. I think Peyton did very well. She played the role very well. The mishap with Mackenzie not getting on her back, I actually think worked in her favour because she got up there and it was like she immediately fell down and then obviously she was dead. So I think it played into it a little bit. Peyton dancing through all that pain, you can see on her face that it's like, Ugh. but I wonder how much of that was pain from the finger or just her playing the character because I think it worked with the sort of Ugh"ness of the character. Yeah, I'd say this was a solid 8 out of 8. There were some nice tricks, there were some nice jumps. The way that she killed all of them was very interesting and fun. On the whole, a good dance. I was impressed, I gotta say. Like like I said at the start of this episode, I'm gonna shit talk the idea and then I'm gonna watch it and I'm gonna be like, oh, yeah, it was actually quite good. Fine, Abby, fine. But yeah, it was quite good, to be fair. Tenth of a point separates first and second place. How do they even have tenths of a place or tenths of a point what is the point of that? Is it like an average score across the whole board and then they find like the aggregate or the average or whatever? Like, is that how they do it? Because I just assumed it was like, oh, like 500 out of 600 and there are six judges. Each one of them scores you out of 100, that kind of thing. But like, how are we getting points here? Like 0.1. 95.1. Like, what? what is this about? What is this? Explain it to me. I don't understand. Entry number one. 69 the huntress from the Abby right you can't begrudge them a tenth of a point that's ridiculous that is absolutely categorically ridiculous a tenth of a point yeah i'd be fucking fuming but also what more could they have done what could they have done to get that extra two tenths do you know what i mean oh god here comes thunder most normal people would think that would be something to be celebrated, but in Abby's mind, that's going to be like the biggest devastation of the world. The thing is, though, it really isn't, and that's the frustrating part. I wasn't cocky about my performance, and I showed Abby that I could be humble and a great team leader. I just hate that we're having to even do this in the first place, do you know what I mean? Ah, she's doing exactly what Abby told her to do. She's playing the game fair enough. Good on you for playing the game, because that's what you have to do at the end of the day. However, I just hate that we're even having to be like, oh, how do you think we did? And then she's gonna be like, actually, I thought you were shit. I thought you were dreadful. I thought that's why you didn't get that one tenth of a point because you you are you honed the gaff up. You are honking. You smell everywhere. I think I just got nervous before I went on stage because I think I felt like I didn't have enough practice and I learned it in a short amount of time. Are we surprised? Not even slightly. Are we surprised she's having a little bit of a panic before she goes on? No, because this is an exorbitant amount of pressure to put on a child. What do you mean learn a dance in three days? That's craziness. That's actual craziness.
I would probably give that an 8. I'll be honest. I think the reason I would give it an 8 is because I hate the fact that every single one of her feckin' numbers starts with her on the floor and then doing like the... Uh, as she like arches her back. I just... I, I, it's just overused. It's overdone. I'm bored of it at this point. There were a lot of things that I noticed in there that she's done before. I'm just bored. And Abby... Your choreography is tired. It is boring. And as Christy said during this performance, the choreography is subpar. She's doing her best with what she's been given. But, like, it's just boring. It's bland and it's not interesting to watch. And that's how I'm starting to feel about a lot of the solos on this show. Is, like, they're just not being given good choreography. And it's a shame. And it seems to be Chloe that gets, like, the worst choreography. Not the worst. Maybe not. I think Nia gets the worst choreography, actually. Like, the, the uh, choreography in the last episode was fucking awful. But it is tough to watch sometimes. And it's tough because, like, I really want to support her. Dancing's amazing. The choreography is not. Seems like I'm so far. Burning cold like a star. I'm stuck here forever. And I cannot wait. Hey, I'm looking for. I was bored. I'll be honest. I was bored watching that. I'm, I was going to give it a 7, but I'm docking her a point, so she's on a 6 out of 10. Purely because if you're going to do Dorothy, give her some fucking red shoes to dance with. Because that's literally the iconic look. It's all well and good putting her in, like, bunchies and putting her in, like, a blue checkered outfit. The red pumps are the most iconic synonymous thing about Dorothy and the Wizard of Oz and you couldn't even be able to get her like red ballet pumps like that would have just completed the look and made it so much better I, I don't know whether it's like a regulation that they're not allowed to wear certain footwear or whatever but I'd have had her in like red sparkly pumps or like ballet shoes or whatever that were just something more than just nude do you know what I mean it's not yeah, it's just ass. It, it's just ass the costume sometimes. I'm just like, ugh, you, you almost had it, but like, I'm docking you a point for that. The dance itself, bit bland, bit boring. I wasn't really that impressed with it. I, I think it was all right. She danced well. The choreography was just boring. Maddie. Is it just going to be week after week of Maddie winning from now on? Because I am getting a little bit bored of that. I might just start skipping these award ceremonies because I actually don't care. I don't like I said, I need to see the score sheets. I need to understand what is going on here. Because if they're scoring them, I want to see the grades. I want to see like, okay, Maddie was higher in technical like ability than Chloe. Okay, fair enough. But like at the moment, you just tell me that she won. I'm like, how? How did she how did she win? Because I, I need to know. I'm taking her over to the other competition and she's gonna do cry what happened to this is our little secret this is our little secret we're gonna do it on the sly and now she's just throwing melissa in the deep end with the other mums oh abby you little bitch can't believe you've done that i cannot believe you i cannot believe it melissa surely the alarm bells are going she's just thrown you to the sharks to the wolves to allow you to be feasted upon if abby sprung doing a solo on her like that and she wasn't prepared maddie would have been a nervous wreck but she was cool as a cucumber and was prepared maddie might as well just be the only person on this show and then the, the show might as well just be maddie's journey to success that that literally is all it needs to be because the other girls are surplus to requirements at this point it's not about oh my child never gets any opportunities it's my child never gets any opportunities but maddie does what do you mean she's getting to compete in two title races in one day and the second one the second one that she's doing is a dance that she is a pro at and has won countless trophies and awards for it's like the odds are stacked in maddie's favor the daughter was taught a solo she got a beautiful costume just like maddie did 
you should know that as about being a dance mom at this point. I'm ready to go. I'm done. Leslie's actually just biggest up. She's the, literally the biggest up ever. Because what do you mean that you're like, well, she got the exact same treatment? She didn't. Like, the choreography was very different in both of those dances. Since I've seen the sunshine, since I have smiled. <laughs> I'm not putting that on the Pazazamia because I don't think that's the best performance of Cry that I've seen. Might have been the shots they decided to use. It might have been the parts of dance that they decided to use. So I think it was just a dodgy like rendition of it in terms of like what they showed on TV. I'm, I'm sure she slayed it. 100% she will. And she's probably going to win because why wouldn't she win two titles in one episode? Because that's just the way Dance Moms is. At the second competition that day, within two hours, that child won two titles at two different competitions. I've, I've, I've got no words. I've got no interest in talking about this. Let's move swiftly along because, uh, yeah, like I said, I, just, I literally have nothing to say about it. I've got nothing to say. Yeah, this episode was a rough one. The covert operation to get Maddie to a second title race is becoming it's like th this do you know what exactly what it's like it's like Abby got exposed for having preferential treatment of Maddie and now she's like do you know what fuck it let's go full throttle let's just full send it yeah actually let's just give Maddie all the opportunities who cares who cares because it's out in the open now nobody actually can say anything or do anything it's like it just is what it is Honestly, the way I would be like, right, let's hold a mutiny. We're all walking out. We're all walking out. We're going on strike. We're going on strike. We're just walking around the parking lot with We Hate Abby. <laughs> Give our children some proper dances to learn. Oh, it's just so ass. It's so bad. It's so shit. But yeah, it is what it is. Thank you guys for watching today. I hope you guys have enjoyed. Make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. I'll see you guys on Wednesday for a brand new episode of Dance Mums. Ugh is all I can say. It's just ugh. Ugh. But yeah, thank you guys. See you guys later. Keep on ranting, and I'll see you guys later. Bye now. See ya.